Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Frenemy Pastry Party by Miso Games. It plays three to six players, takes about half an hour to play, and is for ages 12 and up. In the game Frenemy Pastry Party, uh, you're basically going to be trying to bake cakes in this small, cute little game with a lot of cute little animals. And the way you do that is simply to gather ingredients. Now, when, of course, you gather ingredients, much like that, Hey, you know, that hen thing where you're like, oh, um, you didn't help me bake it. You didn't help me do this or that. You don't get any cake. Well, it kind of functions similarly to that old rhyme or no story, I guess, Aesop's fable, in which you're basically gathering the ingredients and then you have two options, gather or bake a cake. And when you bake a cake, certain cakes will have specific requirements for them in order to be baked and they have little ingredients on them. So you'll say, I'm going to bake a cake. And then everybody else is like, ooh, okay. So you say, can you help me bake a cake? I'd like you to give me a, I don't know, a kiwi. And then you go, okay, yeah, I can give you a kiwi. And oh, can you give me a strawberry too? Yeah, sure, a strawberry. And how about, oh, I don't know, a blueberry. And like, oh, I don't have a blueberry. Well, what about you? Do you have a blueberry? No have one either. Once two people don't have or don't have, because they could lie, uh, then you're going to have to bake a cake with whatever was given to you plus the cards in your hand. And if you can, you're successful and you gain a cake, and that's five points. And everybody else who helped you gather ingredients takes those ingredients and puts them under their character card, which will also score them a point at the end of the game for each one. And if you fail, which means you don't have the cards and you don't have the ability to bake the cake, it's a failed cake and nobody gets any points, which is sad, sad, sad. When eventually all the cakes have been made, except for the last two, the game will immediately end, or or when all the ingredients are face up on the table, that is when the game will end as well. Go around, tally the points underneath your character card as well as the cakes. Whoever has the most is the winner with a couple little caveats. Let's go ahead and show you the game. So here we have the Frenemy Pastry Party and everything included. And as you can see, it's a cute little game. <laughs> it definitely looks like it was made in Japan or Korea. Uh, you're going to have these cards over here, which are your characters. Mr. Raccoon, Mr. Seal, Mr. Corgi? I don't know, a lot of cute little animals basically. And then, of course, you're going to get your ingredients, strawberries, blueberries, kiwis, there's mangoes and all kinds of good stuff. And these are the cakes. Beautiful, beautiful cakes. Those are the de That's the deck of cakes. Uh, basically, what you're going to do is shuffle both of these decks. And then you're going to go ahead and deal out five face-up ingredients and five, uh, three face-up cakes. Every player is going to get a random character. So you're going to take this little stack of characters there, shuffle them up, and deal them to each player. These are basically face down for the rest of the game. But how they work is you'll flip them over, and at the end of the game, if you have the most of a specific type of ingredient under your character card, which is going to be where you place things face down, uh, then you're going to score an additional three points and everybody's going to have that specific character with a specific uh, bonus that they can get. Everybody starts with two ingredients in their hand from the deck and the game begins. The game is very, very simple. You'll be able to draw one ingredient from here or you can go ahead and try and bake a cake. Now, there is a couple rules to it. A, if there are four of the same type of ingredient in this little pool here, then you're actually able to draw two of those ingredients if you select them. So if there's four kiwis here, you could take two of them. Uh, and additionally, you don't need to have all the ingredients yourself to bake the cakes. So we'll go ahead and just start and I'll show you how it works. So this guy here, he needs mangoes. He's a cute little hamster and he has got a kiwi and he's got a strawberry. He's able to draw anything he wants. So he's going to look at these cakes and see the requirements. This cake requires three strawberries, two blueberries, a kiwi and a mango. So he is going to say, okay, well, I've got the kiwi. So I don't need the kiwis here. And I've got a strawberry, but I do need more strawberries and blue, blue, more blueberries. And let's go ahead and look at the rest of these cards here. They are all require, uh, the, the two of them require strawberries and two of them require blueberries. So we will go with a blueberry here. These are always face down and hidden, but he selected that one and then he ends his turn and flips over a new card. The next player will get to do the same thing, determining what they want. The, he needs kiwis and he currently has a kiwi and a strawberry. Uh, so he's got a kiwi, strawberry, kiwi, strawberry. Maybe he wants to go for the same thing. That'd probably be what he would want to go for. So he's going to look at getting probably a blueberry as well. So they're collecting the same thing. That may or may not happen throughout the game, which is fine though, because even if one person doesn't able to make the specific cake, they can still score points in the game. Let's go ahead and flip over another one of these here. And then the next player is going to get a chance. He's got a lot of mangoes. That's pretty good. Uh, maybe he wants to go for this one specifically because it's three mangoes. So he'll go ahead and take an extra mango. Uh, he has chocolate as a secret objective. It would be very nice if he had mangoes, but oh well. And then this is going to flip. Okay, now let's go ahead and uh, show you what else goes on in the game. This, this guy wants to bake a cake. So he's like, I'm going to bake a cake. So I'm going to select this one to bake. So he'll push it to the side so that people know which one he's trying to bake. And then he's going to start asking people for 
their uh, their resources. So he'll say, hey, buddy, do you have, um, what does he need? He's got all three of these. So he needs, how about a strawberry? And this guy might say yes or no. He can choose to say yes or no. So he will say yes, actually. He's like, okay, I have a strawberry. I'll give you a strawberry. And he says, ah, oh, that's great. Um, and he's like, okay, well, do you have a blueberry? I need a blueberry. He's like, okay, I'll give you a blueberry as well. So now he's got his blueberries he needs. He's got one, two strawberries. He's got his kiwi. So all he needs is a mango and another strawberry. So he can choose to ask this guy again. He'll say, okay, do you have a, I need another strawberry. You got another strawberry? He's like, oh, I don't have, or sorry, do you need, uh, do you have a mango? He's like, oh, I don't have a mango. And when you ask people for resources, they can give you as many as they want, right? If you, if they know that you need three strawberries, they can give you all three of them. Okay. So this guy, okay, do you have a mango? He's like, oh yeah, I happen to have a mango. Great. And then he's like, okay, well, well, all I need now is a strawberry. You got a strawberry? And he's like, oh, I don't have a strawberry. When two people say they don't have uh, an ingredient, that is going to stop you from being able to gather resources from the other players, in which case you have to use all the cards from your hand that you can. And if you can't, it's a failed bake. So, for instance, if this character did have a strawberry and he played it, that would mean all of these cards would be utilized in the baking process, along with all the cards in his hand, and they'd all get discarded. Uh, so not disc uh, all of the cards in the hand is going to get discarded and all the cards that are played are going to go under the player boards of the players who chose to play them. Uh, so that's going to allow them to score one point at the end of the game for each one they kind of helped use for the cake. And the cake is going to score under that player's cards. So you might not get the cards you played to bake it, but you do get five points for the cake that you made, which is pretty good. And everybody kind of contributed. Everybody got some points. Uh, he got the most amount of points, though. So, you know, you can kind of be a little more evil if you want. And a new cake would pop out. Now, had, unfortunately, there not been a strawberry, which there actually wasn't, the bake would fail and these people would discard their cards, in which case nobody gets any points, and that can happen as well. After that, the next player would just take their turn and they'd be able to keep drawing resources, and the game would basically continue up until the point where all the cakes had been dealt out except for the last... Uh, this should be basically last to two cakes. When that happens, the game instantly ends. So when one pops out, when one gets bought, one pops out, that'd be the end of the game, in which case you're going to score all the points underneath your player boards, along with uh, them all being worth one point and the cakes are worth five. Then everybody's going to flip over their character card and see who has the most of that specific type of topping under your character. And if you do have the most, then you're going to score that bonus points. Player who has the most points at the end of the game is the winner of the game, Frenemy Pastry party okay let's come up and talk about it cute that's what this game reminds me of when i first saw it i was like this is the cutest thing ever my wife really really likes the artwork for this game and likes the idea of doing the cakes and baking you're working together sort of like you always want to help because you're going to score points when you per push the ingredients out now if you are not sure if they're actually going to be able to make the cake and they're just trying to score five points without actually using any of their ingredients they're being greedy and you want to be careful and you're not sure if they're going to do that or not or how many you really want to give out because one for one point is a good trade you'll draw a card and then on your next turn somebody wants to bake a cake and you give that card out for a point that's worth it but let's say that's on your turn and you want to bake a cake and so you're like i want to bake this cake do you have this do you have this do you have this till everybody puts stuff in to the point where you don't have to put anything in that's five free points for you that's a really good but uh it makes people pretty pretty upset because that becomes that makes that's the frenemy in the friend pastry party um but it has this weird cute like friendly feel about the game it, it's not as actually take daddy as i was thinking it was going to be it's more of like everybody really does want to help it's just you got to be careful about how much greed you want to kind of push into the game because the more greedy you get the more likely you are to potentially fail or people will just be like I don't have what you need. I don't have what you need. Okay, you just wasted a turn at that point. Uh, I really, really enjoyed this game. It was a lot of fun. I think players who enjoy games that are like Sushi Go and whatnot, the style of those type of games, the cuteness factor. Uh, this one also has, of course, the fact that you're trying to gather the cakes and use the ingredients. It's very simple as to how it functions. Younger kids will understand this game fairly easily, but it has a depth of strategy, and that's based on how you want to give your ingredients and when you want to give your ingredients and when you want to choose to bake because players may or may not be as friendly as you would like them to be. I found this game to be very enjoyable for a quick style game. Uh, most people, I think, are going to enjoy this game. If you if you see it and it seems like something you'd be interested in, I think it's something that you should definitely take a look at because it's straight up like very see what you get. And not only that, but also the fact that you got the little cake added aspect where you're choosing to have people give you stuff. It's a very unique mechanic that I haven't really seen before where you're like asking for resources up to the point where they actually can give you everything 
and you just score points for that, which is kind of worth it in the end, right? Uh, so that was a nice little touch to a card game that I thought was going to be kind of like blase, you know, basic style, take that or whatever. It's very, very different, very unique, and of course, just loving the artwork. Overall, Frenemy Pastry Party was a fun little game that I definitely would be playing again, especially with a younger audience with my little cousins. It's a game they're definitely going to like. Um, and of course, my wife, who enjoyed it very, very much. Um, will I be playing this all the time with my gamer guy friends for deep strategy? No, no, no. If you're looking for something a little deeper, a little stronger uh, in theme, probably this one's not going to be your cup of tea if you're looking for a game that has more take that. You know, you're actually expecting to be more aggressive in combat. Maybe not for you as well. But if you see it and you like the cuteness and you like the idea of baking cakes and working together, sort of, then Frenemy Pastry Party is one I would definitely take a look at down below in the description. Check it out.